Hello and welcome back to the realm of insanity. I am the Queen K Power XD, and don't worry, I'm not going to babble too much because we are going to have a fantastic guided tour of the next DLC for the Elder Scrolls Online, Fire Song. We are not just going to have a normal tour, this is going to be a dev guided tour. So, without further ado, let's go! I don't know where we're going, we're just going over here because it's online. Let's go! <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Good to see you all. Well, I guess not see you, but you know. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> so happy not to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have to look at your face. You. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me just turn Jeremy up a second. Jeremy, say words. Uh, words, is this sound any better? Uh, yeah, that's better. Rocking. Yeah, I think the last time we talked, actually, my setup was even worse. So hopefully I sound better this time. You do. You sound like you're in a toilet, but it sounds like a nicer toilet than the last one. <laughs> Rocking off. I'll, I'll, I'll take what I can get. If you found his home office. <laughs> <laughs> cool beans. All right. Well, let's let's get this show on the road because I know we're running a bit late. Are you all running around PTS right now, by chance, or mm -hmm. do you want? Yep. Okay. Yeah, me and Kay are in Gonfalon. Cool. I'm in Costa del Gratwood. Uh, we are hanging out in the Vastir outskirts, Wayshrine. If you all want to hop over. Um, it's the one right outside the city. Should be unlocked. And then while you're jumping, I'll give you the... The, the spiel. Broad strokes, but you will probably know this better than I do. Um, so this is Firesong DLC. It is update 36. That's right, 36. It's crazy that we have been around that long. Um, it's our eighth year. We've got hundreds of thousands of NPCs, thousands of quests. We just recently broke over 200,000 lines of VO per language. Uh, we are in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most number of NPCs. And that was years ago, so I think we've really crushed that record now. But, you know, be curious to see. Um, mm -hmm. As we know, we've got a little something for everybody. Battlegrounds, Sierra Deal, Dungeons, Trials, Housing, Antiquities, Companions, a whole bunch of things. Um, this is Fire Song, though. This focuses on the new zone, which is called Galen. Uh, Galen and the zone story are going to conclude our year of Legacy of the Breton storyline. Uh, this is 15 hours of new story content, six new mythic items. I'm sorry, six new items, three new mythic items, uh, a bunch of collectibles, furnishings, and dyes, some new achievements, as well as titles. Uh, and then for those of you that like tribute uh we have a new deck the druid deck which is a patron deck um base game improvements because we always do things to the base game in addition uh one of the things that i think is super cool is target markers i was actually using that today uh, in a trial it was kind of fun to actually be able to see the two different tanks um we also have text-to-speech uh, that is a new accessibility options so that should make it easier for people that have difficulties uh hiding pets is i think something that people are going to really enjoy uh it basically it's a toggle it defaults to off but you can turn it on and then that annoying bear will be gone when you approach the crafting station uh it is not actually the entire city it is more based on proximity to annoying things uh for example the crafting station i said that weird possibilities for annoyment while you are working on you know various bits uh so a few things for housing as well. Uh, chat links to the home, I think, is going to be really fun, uh, as well as giving an opportunity for furniture lists uh, for people that love the decorations in a house. Um, as well, uh, this is the fourth quarter. That means it's the end of our story arc. Uh, so we have two capper quests. Those quests are available if you've completed High Isle, uh, as well as the new Fire Song DLC. Uh, the more of the year of content you have created, the more you will see, but those are the only two required things. Uh, and he is pretty excited to bring that big story to its conclusion, but I'll let Jason speak to that. Uh, right, so that's pretty much it. Release date, uh, PC, Mac, 11.1, consoles, 11.15. I'm going to turn it over to Jason and then just mock him from now on. <laughs> I'm going to mock Jeremy first. Every time you give the dates, yeah, I think you give them backwards because us we do dates differently in America. So I think you're like, am I am I right in that? Like, 
eleven one for us is one. Oh, uh, you are totally <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> November. Oh, we do day. day then month. You are, yeah. <laughs> you're right in saying yeah. they're different, but you're not right in saying you're right. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's All not right. January eleventh, or it's not the fifteenth month. All right. Jeremy yeah, told the last bit that too, November. so I was like, man, I hope they're not all confused now, but that's that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see that way. Good to uh, hear. All right, Jason, take it away. Sure. Uh, so my first question, uh, how many of you have already played through everything on PTS? <laughs> no. I, I have not been on yet. Okay. Same, Papa, have you not done it yet. <laughs> all right. You've explored, though? Yes. Run around? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. I just... I know, like, a lot of times, like, you all are obviously uh, really in on everything and probably have watched ESO Lives or the media things and stuff like that. So a lot of this is going to cover a lot of that same stuff, but we'll, we'll try to make it a little bit more fun. And um, as always, if any of you have questions as we're going along, uh, I always like to make these more kind of conversational. Uh, so feel free to just interrupt me and be like, hey, I got a question or, hey, I have a comment about this. It's fine. Um, like I said, this is more meant to be uh, i am your tour guide and i will give you the the dry history and the fun and all that of everything but by all means at any time if you all have any questions let me know all right uh and on that note uh so welcome to galen uh this is the northern island of the sisters archipelago uh this obviously with our chapter we explored high isle and ominous uh this was our first chance to really dive into galen which is the home of the druids um the big thing is you know it's a legacy of the brens this year we want to dive into the history of the brens where they came from and all that fun stuff and a lot of their kind of background and ancestry uh is connected to druids uh and that's one of the big things and themes that we play with not only in the uh the main story of the dlc but as jeremy mentioned to the capper quests or the bonus quests as we call them which it will kind of resolve everything at the end of the year when you have completed both the main Main story for High Isle and the main story for Fire Song. Uh, we are standing outside of House Mernard's uh, main city in the capital city of Galen, uh, Vastir. Uh, this is run by House Mernard, who is one of the noble Bren houses of the Isles. Uh, their, uh, their symbol or their house symbol is the Hound, uh, which is kind of cool. I like their colors, uh, dig their armor set. Uh, house Mernard is, I would say, like, Gonfalon Bay is very kind of like the resort town of House Dufort uh in the you know luxurious and nobles people go on vacations there and and have a grand old time uh vastir i would say is more the working class uh this is a city of people of traders and uh dock workers and sh shippers and pirates and things like that um so it's definitely not as grand and uh and noble as gonfalon bay but it's still a nice city um as we head over to the east, southeast here, uh, one of the big differences is uh, is a lot of the city was built around old, ancient kind of Druid architecture. Um, part of that is the Druid district, which is over here to the east, and that is, this is kind of the home base uh, within the city, anyways, of the Stone Lore Druid. It's, uh, obviously, we met the Stone Lore in. Um, in the chapter they play a very heavy role here this is again you know since this is the home of druids this is kind of their home base uh house Mernard, they i wouldn't say they're allies of uh each other but they accept each other they help each other out uh throughout the um the storyline um but yeah, just a lot of kind of cool Druid architecture, lots of various stone engravings, which we really played up uh, throughout the zone as we go further north. You'll see that as well. But uh, they play kind of a really integral role uh, of the city itself and, and just working with House Bernard to provide potions and trade and whatnot. Um, so we'll head over here uh, really quick to the north. Um, I think Jeremy mentioned this. Uh, one of the new additions uh, to this release is the addition of the Druid King deck for Tales of Tribute. Um, 
I always lose where the end is. Oh, it's right here. Uh, if you want to go play a game and uh, of Tales of Tribute and you've done the quest line, um, you will be able to come into here and challenge your opponents. You also uh, get to chat and work with our buddy Razum Dar, who we haven't seen in a while, who makes his triumphant return. Everyone loves Raz. Um, I love Raz. Uh, we have a complicated relationship, though, but I won't go into that. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you'll unlock, uh, speaking of the Tales of Tribute, so if you want to come and play in Galen, you got your opponents over here. Uh, there may or may not be one of the founders hidden in the zone um, to challenge, just like we do in the High Isle itself. Um but uh, you will unlock the deck by basically playing the content, doing the quest, world bosses, delves, things like that. You'll unlock all the fragments for that, as well as find the hidden cards uh, and upgrades and whatnot. So that is that. Bye, Raz. See you later. Um, and then we'll stop by one other quick thing. Uh, my favorite thing of this release, um, I am sure you are already aware of what I'm going to. Um, the stables and my favorite thing petting animals um and interacting with them uh i don't know how many new animations we added this release but it seems like every time we do a new update we make it so you can interact with more animals uh just in general uh this time i think it's like a horse a cow our dogs our cats um pretty soon you'll be riding on dolphins if our team continues to have their way um but we wanted to because it's just oh yeah <laughs> uh and because it's just a fun thing um you know we want to add an achievement to it the best of friends so uh we've actually made an update uh to this it used to be just like find all the animals and uh pet them and you'll unlock an achievement which actually unlocks a fragment of the druid deck um but uh now, if you actually pull up the achievement, we've made like a little scavenger hunt out of it. So it's similar to how kind of like the sky shards are, where you'll get a little hint as far as uh, where the creature might be. Because we have so many dogs and cats and stuff throughout the world. We want to make sure that you don't have to run up to every single one of them and try to pet them. But I mean, you could do that too if you want. Um, but yeah, that's just one of our mini kind of fun achievements we always add like the design team always kind of we brainstorm and put our heads together to try to uh, uh figure out you know what are some fun achievements that players can do that are different and kind of outside the typical go kill everything and go do these quests and all that um but yeah that's that's one of my favorite new achievements in the game um and yeah like i said just expect probably more and more of those as the uh, as time goes on so we'll head out here the north gate as I'm fighting off a cough really quick uh, to go explore the um, the actual overworld. As should be noted, uh, this is one of our cities. Uh, our cities are hubs. There's going to be your standard dailies, your standard crafting, banks, etc. This is the point where we want players to be able to find each other. So this is all the services you've come to know and love from our capital city. All right, so now we are on the outside of the city um, in the southern portion of Galen. Um, so the southern portion has a lot of similarities to High Isle itself. Uh, this is definitely the most kind of civilized of the areas. Um, just in the fact that House Bernard has made its presence known along the eastern coast. If we were to go that way, they have a, a port and some various little small settlements and whatnot. Um, so it's, you're going to have a lot of similarities and kind of a very similar feel to High Isle. Um, the volcanic vents make a return from High Isle. Uh, we always, every time we do a DLC, we want to make sure that we have group content in it as well. Um, there's a very active volcano if you pull up your map and look to the southeast. Uh, on the Isle of Ithlon uh, that plays a very important role in the story and the uh, end capper slash bonus quest story as well. Um, so of course, you know, it makes sense that we're going to have volcanic events and, and world events here that make a return and those will be involved with, uh, we actually have a set of dailies and whatnot to do those um, as per usual. Uh, so if we head up here uh, to the north a little bit and take the road, uh, we will kind of start heading into more of the Druidic area. Um, 
as you, I'm sure you've seen, the Chimera, uh, our buddy here, uh, makes is one of our new creatures. Uh, we really, I think for this, you know, we always have a lot of fun kind of thinking up new monsters in general. Like, what are we going to introduce to the world? Uh, how does it fit in with the lore? Like, we do a lot of deep diving into, like, old lore books and looking at old previous Elder Scrolls games and stuff when we're figuring this stuff out. Um, but the Chimera is one of those things that we want to kind of take a a twist on the classical kind of Greek uh, uh, mythological creature um, and do our own kind of Elder Scrolls twist. Uh, we actually did a ton of variations. We have some really funny like art of different types of monsters when we were concepting this out and like throwing random Elder Scroll monster heads on these creatures just to see what they would look like. Uh, and yeah, there's some pretty funny results, but um, this ended up being, uh, you know, kind of doing our own take of the the griffin, the lion, and the wamasu uh, was kind of where we landed, and I, I I dig it. It's one of my favorite creatures. Turned out freaking awesome. Personal opinion, but yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, the world boss uh, over in the east is definitely, um, you know, obviously a much stronger version of the one we just walloped in two hits, but um, but yeah, it's it's always cool to just you know bring new creatures into the fold uh and and all that so uh as we kind of work our way north here uh one of the big things again you know we mentioned druid several times uh, um a lot of the quests really kind of revolve around and explore the belief of the druids um where they've come from their culture what the, why they do what they do uh, um and our delves also kind of explore into it. This is uh, Fawn's Thicket over here. Um, hold on. Bye, wolves. See you later. Um, and this is kind of our little introduction to one of our druid friends. Uh, once these guys die here. Bad wolves. Bad wolves. All right. There we go. Hey, we may even be able to take a world boss down today. We haven't been successful in any of these groups yet. Uh, I was actually thinking I'm ready to go for the Chimera. <laughs> do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. I, I, I have let's hit the forest freeze when we come yeah. on it. Oh, well, yep, we'll hit that. Uh, but anyways, as I was saying, so yeah, so we'll meet our Druid buddies here. Uh, in this case, we meet Mohair, the fawn, the baby fawn. Um, you'll explore a little bit about why they are in danger in this area. It has to do with kind of their food sources and and the wolves kind of coming in but again just you know fun little stories really diving into the druid background and mythology of everything so um expect to see a lot of those uh so let's just head up north here uh do do do, do find the road it's dark out of course it's dark out there we go all right get everyone back on track Cool. All right. So as we head north, uh, we start to kind of get into our uh, second biome region when I'm facing the right way. Sorry. Um, which is more of kind of the uh, I call it the, the the resort, beautiful area of like this is where you would go like on a vacation. Um, you still in kind of very foresty nature area, but you start to enter into places with like hot springs and calderas and flowing rivers and uh, the forest gets a little bit thicker and you see a lot more of the druid architecture and stone carvings and all that uh, as you approach through here. Um, we are actually going to cut through an area known as Ifri's Path. Um, this is a sacred area to the Druids. Uh, you'll actually work with the Elder Tide Druids, uh, who, if you remember from High Isle, were a bunch of big meanies and kind of crazy. Um, they're still big meanies here, but they kind of, they're not as overly hostile. Um, you'll meet with their leader and kind of understand uh, their view on things. They're very kind of distrusting of outsiders, uh, and you'll understand why. Um, but as we go through here, you will notice um, a, a once sacred Druid site is no longer sacred. Um, it kind of got the purple haze, purple rain thing going on, and there's clearly some sort of corruption going on. Um, one of the themes that we kind of tackle is, you know, what happens when you have kind of these sacred rituals and grounds uh, and areas that you live in and, and people kind of start to come in from the outside or just anywhere and kind of mess with that um this particular objective has a very big kind of secret uh underneath all of this that we won't spoil um 
but outside influences have clearly shifted things around and caused this uh, strange kind of pollution to the area. Uh, so you'll kind of take a deep dive into that and uh, figure out what's going on. So we'll make our way through here. Kill this guy by crocodile. All right. Mount on up and head continue to head north and northwest. And get to some of my favorite newcomers who have joined the zone here. Uh, let's head up here first. So yeah, so if you kind of look to the west, you'll see again lots of old kind of bread architecture areas that have been long abandoned have kind of reclaimed for various purposes. Uh, and one of those purposes is the sieging and occupation of the shores of the one of my favorite races, the, the Malmer, uh, the Sea Elves. So uh, in this particular case, we're encountering the Dread Sail. Uh, uh, as you're familiar with, they played a part in the trial and dungeons. They're kind of notoriously bad guys. Um, and they are sieging kind of the island itself and really being a pain in the butt for uh, House Renard. Uh, they're more organized than usual. They're attacking strategically. It's it's kind of out of character for them because in a lot of ways they're, you know, they've always been these pillaging band of pirates uh, that roam the countryside and, and cause lots of chaos. But now they're almost more militaristic in a lot of ways uh, in, in their attacks. Um, so you kind of figure out, you know, or dive into why they're doing uh, what they're doing and, you know, seeing uh, what they're up to. But uh, they're not the only Malmer on the island. Uh, there is another group that you will encounter known as the Gilded Blade, who kind of are at odds with the Dread Sail. Uh, they very much have a different belief uh, than these, this group does. Uh, and they are led by uh, one known as Captain Seravine, a sea elf uh, pirate captain, who uh, may join you on your adventures, uh, which I'm super excited about. We don't tend to do a ton of friendly sea elves. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily call her friendly, but she's helpful. Um, you know, a, a means to an end type of uh, thing. Um, if you look down here, this is some of the Malmer docks. You'll go explore there. Uh, you can obviously go down there anytime time if you want. Uh, but again, kind of when you dive more into figuring out why they're here, and what they're up to, um, you will definitely be over in that area exploring down on those ships to, to see what they're what they're up to. So we'll continue to head north here a little bit. Uh, keep an eye out. We do have uh, one of the things we brought back this release uh, that we haven't seen from Deadlands is wandering world bosses. Uh, they will kind of spawn up and wander throughout the zone. This is one of the areas that they can wander through. Uh, it's a bunch of giant spriggans that will stomp on your face. Um, I don't see one right now, but they're, they're out there somewhere uh, waiting to kill someone. <laughs> Um, we'll take a quick detour here into uh, one of my favorite areas of the zone, Glimmer Tarn. This is um, the home of the Stone Lore. So, as we mentioned, they do have a presence within Vastir itself, uh, but this is kind of where they truly call home. This is, uh, again, one of my favorite places just because of the amount of like ornate Druid architecture, uh, furnishings, things for anyone who's really in the housing, a lot of these items. You be able to put in your house with fire song uh, um the again you see kind of the stone carvings up near the waterfall of the druid king Kasserin. um his history is how he was once the leader of all the druids of galen um he uh he plays or his history plays an important role in the storyline itself so you kind of take a deep dive into that um Zyna had found rufus uh, another one of our, our our little friends here that uh, will unlock the achievement. Spoiler alert. That's the only. Those are the mm -hmm. only two I show you. You'll have to find the rest on your own if you haven't already. Um, there are multiple Rufuses when people pet them. We're working on that, but everyone gets a Rufus. Um, so enjoy it. <laughs> no. I thought we thought we fixed Rufus, but Rufus is up to no good. He's always getting into the Druid spells. Uh, causing he just can't mischief. Get yeah, exactly. <laughs> Always causing mischief and mayhem. 
but yeah, so you will you will come to the uh, Glimmer Tarn a lot throughout the story. Um, you interact with the Stone Lore uh, quite a bit. One of the main characters from the Prologue quest, if you've played that, uh, and the D Dungeons DLC, Druid Laurel is one of our main characters. She she has an important role throughout the story uh, as well. So we'll cut down east here as we make our way out of Glimmer Tarn. I always get turned around in here. Druids love their rocks and architecture. So head out here. Cool. And then we'll make start making our way northeast to my uh, my favorite biome we've done in a while, kind of favorite region uh, in the jungles of Galen. Um, this is to like one of the, the goals that we really wanted to, to do when we made this area was um, we kind of pitched it to the art team. We were like, listen, Galen itself is meant to be kind of undisturbed by the hands of man um, in a lot of ways. Like the Druids live there. They have their, you know, everything that they have. Um, but we really want it to, oh, I'm actually, let's head this way on this road up here. Um, we want to make sure it feels like parts of it feel very unlived in and crazy and chaotic. Um, and so as we approach and kind of look upwards, you'll kind of see the, the towering trees as it gets thicker and thicker. You know, these trees are as tall as, uh, as some of the mountains and a lot of the, uh, flowers are as tall as us. Um, and it finally, I think like to me at least um this is the most like heavily forested area we've done since like grotwood uh and mobile tour and all those areas from the base game um it just it feels like an area you could get lost in as you're kind of roaming around um, one of the other additions that I'm super excited about that uh, is one of our returning characters is Quinn from our Thieves Guild. We haven't actually seen Quinn in a long time. This is her first return since the Thieves Guild. Um, we love Quinn. I know a lot of players really like Quinn and, and the cast of the Thieves Guild in general. Um, so she will join her on a little heist involving the CLs uh, as you kind of uh, play through her adventure. Um, if you've done the Thieves Guild, uh, you know, she remembers you as we try to do with all of our returning characters. And if you haven't, this is kind of her first quest as she's trying to make her way into the Thieves Guild and kind of prove herself. So, um, you know, always try to, whenever we're doing returning characters and stuff like that, it's always a, a fun little challenge of writing those in a way. So it, it feels good as a returning player. Uh, but if, you know, you're experiencing for, for the first time, it wouldn't make sense if she's like, oh, hey, old friend. Um, so... But yeah, Quinn, Quinn definitely has a very unique and fun adventure of her own. Um, so we will head over towards the world boss here, since it seems like we're up for the task. Um, and see our second new creature, uh, the Forest Wraith. The best way I can describe the Forest Wraith is basically um, if you took the embodiment of death and evil and infused it inside of a nature spirit, uh, but not like in a necromantic way, but more in a druidic way. Um, the forest wraith is essentially what you would end up with, a uh, creature of hate uh, who just wants to destroy everything uh, in their path, pretty much. Um, let me make sure I got potions on my bar here. All right, let's see if we can do this, team. I, I, out of all the groups we have, I trust this group the most. It's dead. So, Make pressure. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's do it. I'm. I'm not like this is a temp character. This is not my regular character, so I'm not specked out it the way I usually am. So. Um, you got all your excuses out. Already. All my excuses. I'm. I'm already. I'm already delivering them. I have a checklist. Oh, I can't see my cooldown timer. <laughs> oh no! No add-ons. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't have my companion. <laughs> I don't use add-ons. You're fine. <laughs> True experience. You gotta kill that boy, does it mean? Yep. Get the Spriggans, and we got all these little spider friends. We're already doing much. We did this uh, with a group the other day, and I swear this this thing sat at like 90% health for like five minutes. We eventually were like, <laughs> oh. got him like immediately. Yeah. Quite funny. We were like, all right, we just, you know what? We're just gonna move on. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> this is this is much more promising. The, Roll it's through. fun to make cool new oh, characters. No. Cool new monsters and just one of them. Oh, he's out really well. Oh, oh, oh. We're doing good. Oh, there you go. Oh, there he is. Alright, I got this. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is easy mode. We need to buff this clearly, Jeremy. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna tell you. million there. health, do that. Yeah, yeah. Triple its damage, give it ten times more health, call it a day. I, I want <laughs> death. Fun. Death and destruction next time we come to this. <laughs> cool, so yeah, so that was the Forest Wraith, uh, or what's left of the Forest Wraith. Um, you'll learn a little bit more about their origins and how uh, one of their possible ways of coming into being and all that, so through some of our quests. Um, but yeah, let's uh, now that we got our achievements on PTS, because uh, those are important, um, <laughs> head over down uh, to the south. Oh, I don't know if anyone saw the Whoop. swinging monkey just now. I uh, saw him. Yeah, yeah. So those uh, those are our little friends. Uh, just yeah, they like to throw stuff. We don't say oh, that. Oh, there he is. Yeah, Bobby. yeah. <laughs> I'm always like, they're swinging monkeys. I promise, and then I can never find them. And now, okay, now I need to remember. Oh, he's showing oh, yeah, up now. Yeah. He is, yeah. Stupid little monkey. He could he couldn't show up any other time, but now he's gonna show up eighteen times. I see how it is. Um. Anyways, as I just keep seeing him swing. Now he's yeah, he's definitely showing off. Um. So as we continue kind of into the jungles itself, um, there's definitely you start to see more of the effects of the volcano of the area uh, kind of pushing through. Um, this was cool because obviously we've done a lot of volcano stuff in the past, you know, with Morrowind and Stone Falls and other areas and all that. But, um, you know, we really wanted to take where Morrowind in a lot of ways is the Dunmer kind of build around the volcano, the volcano and the ash, and it's kind of part of who they are. Um, this is kind of more of an emergent thing. This wasn't always there, so it's kind of more sudden and and uh, just kind of ravaging the land and popping up and kind of merging. You know what happens when you take uh, something with the jungle and then uh, you know it all of a sudden all the stuff starts popping up throughout everywhere. Um, as you notice, guys, and you jumped in the lava, uh, it gave damage. I, I'm sorry to steal your thunder, Jeremy, uh, but the lava will actually hurt you now. I was uh, testing that actually. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, we should have included that in one of our base game features. Lava will... Uh, yeah, well, you know, you know. It's all right. It's not that hot of lava. It's, if it's you want to stand there all day, you can have Yeah, it's lukewarm lava. It's like okay. lava. Bath lava. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll give you a tan, maybe a maybe a first degree burn. All, all right. right, let's speak that one too. Man, all this right, is a yeah. useful interview. Yeah. <laughs> Pop my bathing towel on. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's more like the sauna, you know. <laughs> go to the hot spring, enjoy, get a little relaxed again. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, we will continue to head uh, east a little bit. Yeah, we'll head over here. Um, so as we mentioned, you know, we've we've kind of seen the stone lore. We've talked about the Evertide, but then there's the fire song. Um, you know, the fire song are very much of the belief that uh, ever since the groups have kind of broken apart um, it to form the the Evertide fire, uh, fire Song and Stone Lore, that they really should be reunited, and they have good reasons for it. I'm not going to spoil those, but um, they really want to kind of recrown a new Druid King and unite all the Druids under kind of a singular Druids of Galen banner again. Um, so this is kind of where they make their home base. Uh, there's an area just east of us called Ivyham, uh, which is kind of their home. Uh, and they, uh, as kind of, you know, keeping with the theme of everything wants to kill you here, um, they also want to kill you. They don't like outsiders very much. Uh, um, but yeah, it's it's kind of it's cool to explore. We we haven't done a ton of with Fire Song. Um, we kind of first saw them introduced in the dungeon and then the prologue itself, um, and uh, kind of deep diving into their lore and their history was kind of a cool, fun thing that we were getting to do with this release. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have called it Fire Song. That would have been silly. Um, like, oh, I killed him before he used his. Uh, I call it the Lava Surfboard. Uh, where they jump up and kind of ride a giant lava boulder. Oh, I'm, and here's our my favorite new creature, the frog. Uh, I, I almost forgot my little buddy here while well, he's dead he's now. So have I'll one. never I'll never forget him now. Uh, pour one out for him. Um, but yeah, so uh, 
there obviously there's a joke uh if you're familiar with me about how i put frogs in all my releases um the lava frog is in fact my idea i i put it down when we were figuring out um what type of creatures we wanted to add to the zone and we had a we always kind of go through like a long list and kind of cut it down and figure out what we want to support what makes sense uh and everyone laughed at my frog when i was like i want to do a lava frog they're like still do. yeah they're like no jason no, we're not doing any more frogs. <laughs> and I was like, everyone loved frogs in Blackwood. All right. We need more frogs in the game. And we had tons of cool, like, ideas and different sketches for different things and, like, whatnot. And then the concept team actually went back and they did all the sketches for everything. And lo and behold, what was the coolest creature out of them all? The frog. So I won. It did turn out really cool. <laughs> I, I was still knocking for it, but it still looked cool. You're setting your stamp there. Doesn't matter how many things get changed along the way. I did that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that the frog. I will gladly claim. Like the idea of the frog. I am not an artist. I don't want to claim credit for making him look awesome or anything <laughs> like that. I was just like, give me a cool frog. That's all. It's a give me a volcanic magma frog. That's that's all I want. Um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, I take credit for the frog, and I will have a frog at every release. Or <laughs> that, that's my plan going forward. I don't know if that'll actually work. Uh, but you know, we'll try. Um, all right. So let's see, let's head over. You know what? We'll head to the south a little bit here. I don't think we can cut directly through, uh, but we can kind of work our way around. Um, we have another delve just south of us. Well. Off, everybody. Oh no. It's all right. We were looting shouts on PTS because we Yeah, I know. Cause you need those. Those are valuable resources. Um, here's some fire song friends. Their new looking gear. Uh, head down this way. Yeah, we'll head to the south here. Let me just kind of check in through my notes here too. Um, uh, seeing. So yeah, so lots of lots of cool fire song stuff. Wandering world bosses, which we touched on. Uh, I'm trying to find. There's a spriggan that kind of hangs out around lava. Oh, I click, created my daily endeavor on PTS. It's across from the dell. Is it? Okay, cool. Let's head. Let's head down that way. Let's head south. The trap. It is a trap. <laughs> uh, sneaky. There we go. Um. Let's see if we can find our Spriggan friend. Um, another, again, kind of fun uh, little achievement that we added in. No, I feel bad. They're just resting by the uh, by the lava here. The slightly warm lava that you can heal through now that um, <laughs> I know that. Watch out for the plants. Uh, it might not actually be up. It's my luck. Another it's player came here. in. Oh, did you find it? No, I remember. It's over here. You swing a left. He's Jeremy right comes here. here on PTS every day just to kick the spriggan into the lava. That's he's right. like, I, I remember yeah, he's it. He's right here. Uh, Pretty positive. Uh, is that... Oh, yeah. uh, where, is it up there? Is that it? Yeah, sorry. I fell off the rock. Yeah, I think it's right there. Oh, yep. It is. All right. I'll let someone else do the honors. Go on, Zynaid. Good afternoon. Oh! Yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. There you Yeet. go. Poor, yeah. <laughs> That poor, poor Spriggan. I can't believe you would do that. Wait. Oh, hey, look. I think it's, uh... They won't oh. pay back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that guy's not going to be kicking, telling us to kick any more Spriggans off. Oh, well. Well, there. You got another achievement. <laughs> so, yeah, just, just... We like adding little fun little quirky things like that. Um, but, oh, now I'm stuck on this tree. Let me go around... Uh, let me take, uh, so we can continue on south, uh, see if we can get a good view of the volcano. Say hi to our monkey buds hanging out here on the rock. Um, go down this way. So yeah, so uh, another kind of point of interest down there. We're next to Invervine, which is uh, a pretty cool delve uh, that is really kind of shows off the whole like fire meets um, jungle type of setting uh the fire song are doing stuff and up to no good over there as well um and you find out a little bit more about that uh can you see the volcano from here i'm looking the wrong way so that doesn't help let's go take out these soul razor guys here 
causing mischief and mayhem. There's a hollow armor. They look really cool. Yeah. Yeah, so if you stand up a little. So you can kind of see the volcano uh, from where I'm standing looking to the southeast. Um, oh. Oh, well, not anymore. You can't. <laughs> I can still see it. Um, yeah, just to kind of cover on it, too. So, uh, you know, we, we talked about the capper slash bonus quest. Um, you know, we're super excited for it because it is the culmination of High Isle and Fire Song. We are going to figure out, you know, why the Ascendant Order is doing what they're doing and who the Ascendant Lord finally is uh, and how that's all connected to the Druids and the Volcano. And um, they all have a role to play. Um, I'm super excited. Uh, I keep telling people this without spoiling anything. Um the end quest for the finale is something that uh, we haven't really ever done before to the ex extreme way that we're doing it. Um, so I'm really excited for everyone to get in and play it. Um, that's about as much as I can say without spoiling anything uh, on it. But um, but yeah, super, super stoked for everyone to finish the storyline. Um, we're really proud of it. And uh, yeah, and getting all the characters back together, plus the new characters you meet. Um, they all play a major role. Um, you know, Huff Lady Arabelle will come back from High Isle. Uh, we'll see the Alliance leaders, Jakar, and all those fun, fun things. Uh, and then meet... Well, not meet. I, if you've done the prologue, you'll also have some returning characters. Um, I'll, have you all done the prologue? If I say yes, do I not get told off? Oh, I mean, if you don't care, I don't want to spoil anything. No, I That's... haven't done it just yet. All right. All right. Well, there's a character there that I'm very excited about who makes a return um, and plays a pivotal role in, in both storylines. So uh, that is all I will say. Um, let's see. Jeremy, is there anything that you can think of that you would like to add before we switch it over and let them start grilling us? No, I think you did a great job. Yeah, it's nothing I can think of that, that we didn't talk about. Cool. Um, so, yeah, uh, we will open it up and give you all about 15 minutes or so to ask questions and about whatever you want. And Jeremy and I will do our best to, uh, to answer that. Who wants to go first? Are you all going to be shy? <laughs> You Don't. have a good ex. Yeah, you. you. Like, Do I have any questions? Because that was super thorough. Yeah, and and that's okay too. You don't have to have yeah. questions. But yeah, no, we're we're always excited to show it to people. You know, we, we spend a year or more, you know, planning these things and then executing them, and we can't say anything. So this is always fun for us to get a chance to you know to check things out. But yeah, if you don't got anything, that's cool too. And Man, we, you we can go, always ask later. Yeah, we can go kill the other world boss. Do it. Think, all right. sure. And ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, think of questions. I like how we like go from what we're most used to on High Isle, but then straight into a jungle. Like you went through that cave and then suddenly it's vines and jungle yeah. trees and a whole different biome and a different vibe to it. That was very, very cool. Awesome. Yeah, no. Oh no, did someone kill oh, oh he's still there. Okay, he's there. He's scared. Alright, we're good. Yeah, uh that was more challenging uh then we realized, like, how do you make a smooth transition from, like, where we're standing in now <laughs> versus, like, all of a sudden you're in a jungle. Uh, the art team spent a lot of time working on that. So uh, oh. I will pass that on. Oh, were you, were you all not ready? Did I, I not let you? Oh. All right. All right. We're yeah, going. we sort of invoke him. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, it's always fun to actually try and do the different types of biomes because we wanted to make sure that things don't look the same. But yeah, it's interesting. The last few zones, we've definitely run into issues. That right. was absolutely banging. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is my favorite one. Yeah. All right, who's taking? Hey, he's coming he's for me. Killing him too quick. All right, does anyone have a, a companion character that's a tank? No. I think Don, we'll be fine. Don's companion's dead. As usual. Don's companion was the tank. Mary. No, yeah. Was it Bastion? Bastion always dies. Bastion's Mary usually is reliable. Come on, Mary. Is this you're you're get jumped. 
companions get one shot. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. Oh, we, ah. we just bring companions to torture them. That's that's all. I see how it is. I got him. I got him. All right. There we go. There we go. Yeah, this dude's awesome. Like, yeah, that's man. very cool. This is one of the coolest enemies, and I, and I know this is going to be somewhat of a a biased statement. Although other people might agree, this is one of the coolest enemies since the original Amanticoras. Agree. I agree. Yeah, the Manticoras, the Manticoras from Kraglon were awesome. Uh -huh. and this one does feel kind of the same sort of scale and well, he's he's quite intimidating to be fair. Yeah. No. Oh no! Do we actually have our first death? Oh, oh no. I didn't dodge. Quick, get up, no one on the... Oh, no! Oh, heal her no. down, heal her down. Rip. I was right. healing. Uh, if you die, you get kicked from the stream team. It's over. <laughs> no! I'm gonna have a full report to Gina after this. No! <laughs> In my defense, I'm a squishy healer. That's my defense. Yes. So it's the tank's fault. Okay. Yeah. Blame yeah. the tank. Heavy. Are the chimeras natural, or are they have they been created by some kind of dark magic, or, or are they just natural to this area? <laughs> the Endling Ender. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I would say it's kind of a combination, like, unless... I'm going to hold off on making a joke about three animals somehow mating to have a child, but... <laughs> um... <laughs> It's it's a combination. I would say there's there's a little bit of wild magic uh, involved uh, in it. Um, I'm pretty sure we go into some more in depth explanations in some of the books and stuff like that as as far as how they they came about. Um, we actually uh, a little behind the scenes about the chimeras. Like the they're kind of as we were developing their lore and their history, a lot of it changed over time um, as the story was kind of being made and we progressed with that um so their purpose and the story changed a little bit um so it's kind of shifted over over the uh the past couple of months um and yeah i i, I want to say we landed on kind of a combination of of both um the writers if we had a writer here could confirm or deny that um but yeah it, it definitely the chimera went through a lot of iteration um it just yeah, like I was I was saying earlier, we had some really like kind of funny ideas of like what does a chimera look like and you know, random Elder Scrolls monster heads on a beast and you know, what would they look like and things like that. So um it, there was a lot of experimenting, but I where we ended up I think was is awesome. Like they uh, they are definitely one of my favorite. And I'm not just saying that because this is, you know, I was the lead of this DLC. Um and I I can't. Can I claim credit for Chimera? I don't know. I'm not You've got frogs. I, I, I was fair. actually going to say my nine-year-old son claims credit for it. All right. Ah, well, Jeremy's son. There you go. When we were talking about monsters in the new zone, uh, and I asked him, that was one of the ones he suggested. I'm not actually going to say he deserves it. I am going to say he claims it. Yeah, because then so, we'd yes, have to it's pay either, it. It's either him or Jason. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> NDA, of course. You know. But yeah, I, it, it turned out to be an awesome thing. Uh, one of the things that we also wanted to make sure that was clear is that they're not native here, which is one of the reasons we're saying that they were creative, because they're freaking awesome and we want to be able to use them elsewhere. Uh, so they are a sorcerer's uh -oh. creation, but then they have escaped naturally. So effectively, they are naturalized. I'm not saying we well, have well. planned them elsewhere, <laughs> but I think they're freaking awesome, and I don't want to build a one-off, to be blunt. Yeah. yeah, different types of primaries. That would be cool. I definitely, yeah. yes, we've had that thought. I yeah, just want to, they're so cool. I want, I want a chimera with three frog heads. So yeah. there's more complicated chimeras <laughs> instead of mixing a, a lizard egg, a bird egg, and a lion egg? Well, in mythology, they can be a number of different kinds. I actually did a fair amount of research. Yes. Yeah. So, where, you know, where, where you typically see, that's just the one that's kind of the European accepted. But there's a whole bunch of different ones, and often they have a snake's head on their tail and things like that. Yeah, there's a scorpion yeah. tail I've seen before in some versions. Like, yeah, there's there's lots of lots of cool versions, but ours is the best. So, you know, <laughs> I'll take, take unequivocally. That. Yeah, <laughs> the very best. Uh, so yeah, so there there's a little behind the scenes uh, fact for for the chimera and their their origins frogs are just cool they're just 
they have yeah, frogs, so um, yeah, every frog, every release. Wait, is this the is this the zone where you hear the person? Yes. Okay, so I, it's a spoiler, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's his frog, and you know, every now and again, I'll give him props. Uh, we have a random distraction uh, where you see a frog, and I want to say a female's voice is like. <laughs> And you kill the frog, and the person pops out. You have saved them. Let's you know. Oh. Okay. So, you know something that happens in the jungle, uh, as it were. <laughs> the guy looks so cute. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Be one with the frog. That's that's, that's my. That would be theory. me. <laughs> Hello, little frog. Hello, little dangerous uh, animal. Uh, yeah. Dead. <laughs> Now you are inside the frog's belly, yep. <laughs> um, cool. Do you all have any other questions or anything you want to bring up? Like, uh, again, we have a little bit of time, and, you know, I'm more than happy to try to answer anything you all may have been curious about or anything like that. What um, what prompted the changes to the most recent DLCs and chapters in terms of how dynamic the world looks? Is that due to hardware um, access, or is it due to... Oh, shit. <laughs> Move out of the way! <laughs> is it due to the fact that you just want to introduce some more dynamic stuff in the world? Because you've got the boats that are moving, you've got the the sea puppies, you've got the monkey swinging, you've got all types of different things that you can either look at or interact with outside of the plane. Here's some rocks and trees. And that's been something that's happened a lot, lot more recently. What initially prompted that? Because that is quite a change to the the world of Elder Scrolls as we previously knew it. Tech. Uh, it is tech, yeah. is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. we we had a, a, a not a big one, but a small piece of tech that allowed us to use uh, mounted NPCs in theater. Uh, so they're often tricks of the light. Shh, don't tell anyone. You know, I mean, I guess all games are technically. But, <laughs> but yeah, so that allowed us to suddenly do some of these cool set pieces where the boat goes by, like you said, or where the Ornog is jumping, you know. So it was a combination. Honestly, it probably started with dragons uh, because some of that tech got used for theater. Uh, theater gave us flight paths, um, which allowed us more pathing. Uh, the boats are using a similar tech. Uh, and then the idea of dropping a guard on a horse is another tech request. So yeah, it's honestly, it's just little bits and pieces we just continue to add to the game. But yeah, suddenly it became really possible, honestly, in the high aisles where we really started to see, you know, yeah. that, that come out. Did that also um, prompt the the house guest side of things, except obviously with a player path in it rather than yourselves? Is that part of that transition? No. I, I, let me say, to my mind, no. There are two different kinds of tech. Yeah, but that that was also new tech, but different. Yeah, that was developed differently. Um, Interesting. And everything else, yeah. Um, I also, like, one of the... I give one of a, a big shout out to Owen, who's one of our head kind of encounter guys, who really took that tech and ran with it and discovered lots of cool ways for to see exactly like you know the the various ships sailing around and the monkey swinging and stuff like he kind of um took that on as like a per i wouldn't say a personal project but he he was kind of the the person who brought it to the forefront with a lot of that stuff and and was able to get in the game and then has shown the team how to do that and i think that's also it too is like as the team is learning more and more you're going to see uh more of that type of stuff hopefully uh just fun and it it just makes the world feel more alive uh, in general. So, um, the we... box has got better though over time. That I can't speak to, except for the art. Art got better. I don't know. It did. <laughs> you, you had the skybox kind of feel when it came to the dolmens, but then when you introduced dragons, different yeah. uh, elements of dragons, and then obviously the harrow storms and stuff like that, it got a lot, lot more dramatic. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a, a lot of you know. A lot of us have been working on ESO for a long time, and uh, you know, as we continue on, we are always this, furthering our skills. I, sh I should say, uh, trying out, yeah, new things and learning more and stuff like that. So that never ends, and you know, I'm glad that you noticed that type of stuff because that that means our our progress is is showing and paying off, which is awesome. Yep. 
I basically screamed the first time I saw a ship moving in, in the distance. <laughs> yeah. I was like, ah, it's moving, there's a ship! <laughs> and then the little dude doing his little song going towards it and going round. Oh, oh it was yeah, so good. We argued a lot about that. It turned out <laughs> freaking awesome. And that was the work of audio, animation, theater, and counter. There were a whole bunch of teams that came yeah. together to do that. Yeah, they turned out freaking great. Yeah. It's a really magical moment the first time you like hear him singing in the distance and you're like, hang on, that's getting closer. And then you realize he's going round and round the aisle near the gaming hall. So yeah, I go on about the moving ships all the time on stream and my regulars are like, here she goes again about how cool the moving <laughs> ships are. But Same. It just makes it feel much more alive. Immersion. In maximum immersion. Yeah. In maximum I mean, immersion. It's, a, it's funny because like a lot of those little things really, they they add up and they pay off and it seems like when you do them when even like internally when we're doing them you do a little bit of time and you're like wow this is a, a lot of little things that, but when it all comes together yeah it it really helps make the world feel alive which is you know what we're striving for so i do think things like that make a massive impact to how a player sees the world anyway because obviously i mean loads of different gamers have lots of different perspectives of what they see and how they feel but running down a hill with trees around it all right not to take anything away from the design because it's awesome but some people will walk down it and go oh just some trees let's, let's run and then all of a sudden a monkey swings past your face and you just oh a monkey yeah that, that little moment there it feels like exactly what you're looking for sometimes like it just breaks up whatever it is that you think you're not distracted by and goes oh hey what's that <laughs> honestly elder scrolls even the single player ones have always managed to grab your attention while you are already focused on doing something else like a side quest is never done straight away because you get distracted by a cave and now running through the woods you got things swinging above your heads and it's it's actually pretty cool that you still maintain that kind of interest uh in the in the smaller details even outside of the bigger stuff no thank you yeah no that's that's important for us for sure um it's like like you're saying i mean you explained it perfectly it's uh it's a way to get invested in the world and not feel the same just running by trees and stuff like yeah. that you're like oh, i'm running through nature when little uh like little vignettes like that pop up and kind of catch your eye it's the same reason like we have fun little things that you find along you know the road and stuff um as you go along and interesting characters and little scenes like the frog eating of people and stuff like that it's just it's a fun way to break up the kind of just running around questing killing things and and give you a uh um a feel like it's it's a world that's actually lived in and like i said that at the end of the day that is our goal you know, at the end of the year, when they have, uh, sometimes they do stats of how many world bosses have been killed and stuff. Uh -huh, yeah. I really hope yes. one of them is how many times has that Spriggan been kicked? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Like, I want to know how many PI people. That That's yeah. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell uh, Jess uh, that and, uh, and see if, yeah, they can pick BI and maybe get that in one of the infographs. <laughs> I definitely want to know that because that poor Spriggan is going to get constantly. I know, I know. It's just firewood. We should have just called it firewood. <laughs> just like you kick firewood into the, the lava. So, um, cool. Uh, anything else before we wrap up? I can't think of anything. You, you done a really good job at saying everything oh, I would have asked. <laughs> yeah. I guess. I'm what so are you most proud of? Much, yeah. <laughs> what am I most? What are we most proud of? Yeah, what are both of you most proud of uh, about this DLC? Like, what's one thing you're like, we did good there. I'm really proud of that. Oh, jeez, let me think about that a sec, Jeremy. Uh, what sure. I'm thinking? Um, it's honestly, it's. I was going to say it's a small thing, but it's totally not a small thing. It's a giant thing. Uh, the volcano. Uh, the volcano is an actor in our story, uh, in High Isle and in Galen. Uh, depending on what quest progression you have, there's certain points where you can look at the volcano and it changes what happens. Uh, also tied to that are the little teeny lava events as well as the world events. Those are all things that are supposed to reflect the state of the changing world that's happening. So I am hopeful, and I haven't seen it yet, that at some point I'm going to be watching someone playing and I'm going to see them see the last scene in the capper and have completed the entire change throughout of the, the volcano because it goes through a number of different permutations. Meaning it starts off 
only mildly active and then it gets really freaking active and then maybe there's another state somewhere <laughs> spoilers <laughs> okay. when you manage to do that in an mmo is actually pretty nuts because that's something you'd expect to see at a single player game where it's only from ever from your perspective being able to have individual players at certain parts of a story see different things i mean that's that's actually quite nuts to still be achievable Especially to that extent. Yeah. yeah, it requires a lot of coordination. I think the end result is really cool. But yeah, that's, I'd say I'm proud of that accomplishment. I hope I see someone recognize it. There was a similar point where I saw people finish Riven Spire. Uh, and they hit that point where the uh, tower is gone. And I saw the gasp and I saw that moment. And I was like, that made it all worthwhile. Yeah. That was also mm -hmm. a Jason special too. Yeah, that was my quest line. Yeah, so back in the day when I actually designed quests. Um, but <laughs> um, I would say uh, for me, uh, you know, definitely Jeremy touched on one of the major ones. Uh, and I kind of hinted at it, like the final quest in the, uh, the bonus slash capper quest is crazy. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, but other than that, I think for me... Uh, I, this is gonna sound uh, like I, I say this a lot, but the characters in this in this DLC, I'm really happy with how they turned out. I think our writing team and our designers did a really good job um, of just telling their stories and kind of how they're all integrated amongst each other and kind of their own relationships that they have, um, and as well as our new character that we introduced from the prologue who plays a major role. Uh, I was I very much like that character. Um, the team i think also fell in love with that character and um yeah that i i know that's kind of uh you know it's more lore fictiony but uh and i'm proud of a lot of things that the team did this release uh you know as the lead that's i'm always proud of the team especially when we get to this point and everything's come together and we're finally getting out the door um but yeah, I, I just I think the the story and the characters uh, I think we did a very very good job. I'm very happy and proud uh, of of everything the team did. So that's that's my my answer. Nice. So, yeah. Sorry to to butt in. I'm just conscious of uh, of you guys' time. Um, if if everyone's happy and and has no other questions at the moment, then we can we can wrap up. But if you guys do think of any questions, then you can obviously. You know, ask me on Discord or, or forward it to Nika, I think is your contact, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Um, and I just want to say thank you to, uh, to to Jeremy and Jason because, like, you really accommodated us with time um, and even the streaming issue earlier. Um, and you're both, like, so good at this. So you'll, you'll have oh, to deal you. with me a lot the next month. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Don't no, tell thank him you. that. He's already got frogs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling both of you that. I'm telling both of you that. You've got frogs <laughs> and your PTS sessions now. So, um, yeah, no, thank you to everyone. Um, and yeah, I think that's it if everyone's happy. Awesome. Thank you for having yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank it's you all for joining us. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think so. Just to you three, I think Nika will be in touch with, Nika or myself will be in touch with uh, some assets. And then obviously, you already know the embargo, but just a reminder of that one. Sure. Okay. Cool. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. It was fun. This was a really fun playthrough. Uh, very lighthearted. And uh, yeah, as, as mentioned, if anything comes up, let them know and they can get questions to us. Or um, yeah, I think I follow you all on Twitter, so you can always ping me there too if you have any questions. So. Festa team killed the world boss is just saying bye. Yeah, I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make an official post about that. Yeah! <laughs> all right, I'll. Thank you for joining us, Take and care. I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Thank See you, later. Bye -bye. you. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye. 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 So that was it, the Fire Song Dev Guided Tour. Big thanks to Jeremy and Jason. That was fantastic to see behind the scenes and behind the minds of the people that help make the Elder Scrolls Online what it is. Also, I absolutely didn't forget to unmute myself while I was doing this outro, which is why I'm doing a voiceover. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, thank you to Elder Scrolls for reaching out and letting me do this awesome stuff. And if you're still watching at this point, then you're an absolute star. Type in the comments, puppy pets. All right, bye.